Hello everybody, my name is Pierre Cloton and my speech is entitled Digital Analog Conversion in Acoustic Domain Using a Digital Parametric Array. This work results of a collaboration between the Acoustic Laboratory of Le Mans University in France and the Radio Engineering Department of Czech Technical University in Prague in Czech Republic. This presentation concerns the study and the development of a new type of digital loudspeaker. And the first question could be, what is a digital loudspeaker? Well, if you uh, look at a classical sound reproduction system, you can see that it consists of a microphone that generates an analog electrical signal, an analog to digital converter that allows the signal to be digitalized for storage, for processing or for transportation, and at the end, a digital to analog converter which generates an analog electrical signal which will be transformed into a sound signal by a loudspeaker. Well, the aim of a digital loudspeaker is to remove the digital to analog converter in the sound reproduction chain. So, we need to use a particular type of loudspeaker this loudspeaker must understand the digital signals and convert them directly into a sound signal. And this type of loudspeaker is what we call a digital loudspeaker. The idea of a digital loudspeaker is not a recent idea, and there are already several studies on the subject in the literature. There are mainly two types of digital loudspeaker. The first type it is what we call a digital transducer array and was first proposed in 1980 by Flanagan. Briefly speaking, in this system several micro speakers are driven by the digital signal and generate pressure pulses in order to reconstruct the analog sound signal. The second type uh, is called multiple voice call digital loudspeaker and was first proposed in 1982 by Inanaga. It is an electrodynamic loudspeaker whose multiple moving coils, coils are driven by the digital signal. Here we propose a third type of digital loudspeaker, which we call digital acoustic projector. Our motivation is of course to offer a loudspeaker that eliminates the disadvantages of the existing version and in particular, if possible, to improve the sound quality. But obviously, our main motivation was a scientific challenge. Can we really make this type of loudspeaker work? And in, in fact, that was our question. The principle of this digital loudspeaker is summarized in this picture. And for the sake of, of clarity, we present here an example with a 2-bit digitized signal only. But a digital loudspeaker using a 16-bit digitized signal, for example, works on the same principle. First of all, we consider the, or the original analog electrical signal, given by a microphone, for example, in red here on the figure. Here it is a sinusoidal signal, but of course it is the same principle for any other signal. The signal is sampled and quantized uh, thanks to an analog to digital converter. And each of the quantified values is converted into a n bit binary word, here a 2 bit binary word, and these binary words are the inputs of the digital loudspeaker. Each bit of a given binary word controls a bit grouped set of ultrasound transducers and the number of transducers for each group follows a power of 2 low. That means that the number of, the, of transducer, transducers assigned to the bit number n is twice that the number assigned to the bit n-1. Each group of transducers is connected to an ultrasonic frequency generator which generates a high-level sinusoidal electrical signal at a frequency denoted Fc. So, 
Each group of transducers emits an, an ultrasonic acoustic wave when the associated bit is equal to 1 and it doesn't emit any signal if the bit is equal to zero, and the duration of this acoustic emission equals the sampling period. All transducer groups face a parabolic reflector, so that the different acoustical signals add up in phase at the focal point. A microphone uh, is set as a focal point and picks up the resulting analog sound pressure signal. If the frequency response of the transducers was flat, and if there was no distortion during the propagation, the resulting sound pressure signal measured at the focal point would be proportional to the sum of all electrical signals applied to the transducers, as shown on this figure. In other words, it would be an ultrasonic carrier signal FC whose amplitude is modulated by the sampled and quantized low-frequency component here, a sinusoidal signal of frequency Fm. Here we deal with a 4-bit quantized signal, but obviously an operational system will work with a higher, numbers, higher number of bits. Under these conditions, the signal picked up at the focal point would tend toward this one. It corresponds to an ultrasonic carrier of frequency Fc modulated in amplitude uh, by a sinusoidal signal of frequency Fn. Consequently, the content of the low frequency modulated, modulating signal is shifted to high frequencies in both lateral bands at each side of the carry frequency Fc, as well known from amplitude modulation process. This means that, at this stage, there is no signal in the audible range. Bon, okay, but in fact, uh, uh, we do not have this signal at the focal point. Because of the high, the high amplitude of the carrier uh, signal, nonlinear effects occur during the propagation in the air. And this nonlinear effect leads to the generation of additional components. Part of them are harmonics generated in the high frequency range, but one of them is a component at a frequency which is the difference between the carrier frequency and the two side component frequency. That is the frequency Fm of the modulating signal. So the amplitude demodulation is processed directly in the air during the propagation due to the non-linear effect. And this a process is the process which is used for the parametric arrays. Okay, this is how the system work in, works in theory. Now let's see what it is in practice. In order to check the feasibility of this digital loudspeaker, we have developed a first experimental prototype. It is designed to directly convert a 4-bit digitized signal and it uses four groups of one, two, four, and eight transducers, that is 15 transducers, facing a, para facing a parabolic uh, reflector. And an omnidirectional microphone is set at the focal point at 50 cm from the transducers. The transducers are B star piezoelectric emitters with a resonance frequency at 40 kHz, and this will be the frequency of the, the, the ultrasound carrier. So let's try to reproduce a 1 kHz sinusoidal sound wave. This signal has been digitized on 4 bits, and each bit controls the electrical on-off 40 kHz modulated signal feeding each group of transducers. The frequency response of the transducers acts as a filter on the excitation signals, and the pressure generated by each group of transducers propagates to the focal point where the microphone is set. 
Here is the estimated sum of acoustical signal at the focal point, taking into account the frequency response of the transducers, but without any self-demodulation. As you can see, the frequency content is centered around the carrier and the two sidebands, but it also contains many parasitic components, mainly due, due to the 4-bit quantization. However, there is no energy in the low frequency range due to the filtering performed by the transducers themselves. So this is the, the estimated sum of the acoustical signals at the focal point without any self-demodulation. And here are the experimental results measured with the microphone set at the focal point. We clearly see that the initial analog signal at 1 kHz has been generated by nonlinear demodulation. Unwanted harmonic components at 2 and 3 kHz are generated as well due to nonlinear interaction between all the sideband components around the carrier frequency. This figure shows the audible signal versus time delivered by the digital loudspeaker to the focal point. This temporal signal was obtained by applying a low pass filter to the microphone signal. Similar results are obtained for a sinusoidal signal of different frequencies. As an example, we give here the sound pressure level obtained for a sinusoidal signal with a frequency of 2 kHz. Well, finally, it works. But obviously, the sound quality, quality is not here. The level obtained in the audible frequency band is very low. The, the harmonic distortion rate is high, and when listening to the measured signals, the signal-to-noise ratio is very low. However, these results are obtained with a first prototype that is far from being optimized. Improvements can be made. In particular, the number of bits of the digital signal must be increased in order to increase the sound quality. But then, we will have to use a large number of transducers, and it could be a problem, especially if we want to use a 16-bit uh, quantized signal. Perhaps, perhaps the use of MEMS would provide a solution to this problem. Thank you for your attention.